What's up guys? It's your boy Quick Stocks. As always, remember to hit those thumbs to recharge my dopamine and we will get right into your quick stock analysis of Intel, ticker symbol INTC, trading for $50 a share as of July 26, 2020, equating to a market cap of $214 billion and a relatively attractive PE of nine and a quarter. It's important to note, as most companies have seen a historic rally from their lows in March, well, in Intel's case, after the 17% pullback late last week, the company has only recovered 12% from its lows, lagging far behind its competitors in the tech sector, and even further behind some of its competitors in the semiconductor markets, such as your quick stock favorites, AMD and Nvidia, who are up 80 and 110% respectively. So what's the move? Is Intel an intelligent investment? Or should we tell investors to stay clear? This is your quick stock analysis. It only feels right to start with the company's Q2 2020 earnings, which is what caused the 17% pullback seen late last week. But pump the brakes, at a glimpse, an investor may come to the conclusion that the correction is due to poor performance from their Q2 earnings. Well, it's actually kind of interesting. From the outside, the company did beat analysts' expectations on the top and bottom line, with a year-over-year -year revenue growth of 20%. This is mostly due to the data center build-out caused by Rona and work-from-home restrictions, which actually helped the company reach nearly $20 billion in quarterly sales. With its client computing revenue up 7% to $9.5 billion, while data center's revenue was the big winner in terms of growth, with $7.1 billion in revenue, representing a 43% increase in year-over-year -year revenue. The significant growth in the data center segment comes thanks in parts to a sky-high rise in the company's cloud service provider revenue, which was up 47% year-over-year, and data center chip surged 19% to $7.2 billion. So, in all honesty, at least from a numbers standpoint, Intel crushed it. So, you may be asking yourself, well, why do we see such a sharp pullback? Well, to keep it simple, it's due to issues with manufacturing its 7 nanometer processor, leading to approximately 6 months of delay, pushing the release date back to 2022 to 2023. Which, in all honesty, for once a strong company, it's kind of a joke, and investors are starting to wonder if Intel will ever catch up let alone regain its title as a technology leader. Remember, Huawei, Samsung, Apple, Qualcomm, AMD already have their 7 nanometer chip in the market, and it's going to be another two years before Intel, the once great king of chips, can compete from a technological standpoint. Taking into consideration how long two years is from a tech perspective, and of course, Intel delayed their 14 nanometer, 10 nanometer, and once again, their 7 nanometer chip, Let's be real, they're not going to be leading the way with 5 and 3 nanometer chips. Let me quickly note why nanometer size is so important in CPUs. The smaller transistors are more efficient. Simply put, they can do more calculations without getting too hot, which historically is the limiting factor for CPU performance. Also, it allows for smaller die sizes, which reduces cost and can increase density. And this means more cores per chip. Just to really drive this in, because it is rather important for someone considering starting a position in Intel, this means less material for a better end product. The more cores allows your tech to keep up with all the different information being sent to it. For a small real-world example, imagine the amount of data in autonomous vehicles that needs to be processed. With our current tech, 7 nanometer and 10 nanometer chips are fine. But let's be real, technology has a way of evolving around the newest and greatest tech. And in many ways, these chips are the gatekeepers into this new world. Anyways, moving on, this isn't the only production issue Intel has been facing. In 2019, Apple blamed Intel for the disappointing Mac sales and announced that it would be transitioning Macs to its own proprietary chips, cutting Intel out. Along with this, Intel's third quarter guidance was also weaker than some analysts expected. Intel predicts sales of $18.2 billion, down 5% from the prior year, and predicts earnings per share at $1.10, which would be a 22% yearly decline. 
bear with me. I know I'm painting quite the grim case for Intel investors, but there's one more thing I need to discuss before getting into the bull case for Intel. Which is, investors in Intel need to remember they are heavily exposed to the Chinese market and has been sensitive to the relationships between the US and China. In 2019, Intel generated $20 billion in revenue or 28% of its top line from the Chinese market. And nearly 10% of Intel's net assets are based in China. Which you know, depending on your view, this could actually be a good thing, as Intel is currently dominating the CPU market in China. As of Q1 2020, the company had a 78.8% share of the market. China and Intel are dependent on each other, and it's hard to imagine this changing in the short term, unless the US were to put more restrictions on the company doing business with China, which, considering current tensions, it's certainly a possibility. The thing is, China realizes its dependence on these chips and is ramping up its own production to remove some of this reliance, which could represent a massive decrease in market share for Intel in the upcoming years. Let's just say things are a little bit rocky between the two countries. Anyways, now that we've racked up some dislikes, if I'm being honest, Intel does have quite a few catalysts for investors. We gotta start with the dividend. After all, Intel has a nice dividend of $1.32, equating to a yield of 2.6%, compared to the semiconductor average yield of 0.37. Just let that sink in, the world's largest semiconductor chip maker is offering that extra incentive for investors, which is intriguing. And overall, the company has a decent balance sheet. As of fiscal 2019, they had $136.5 billion in total assets, which is actually significantly outdated. Currently, the company's total assets is closer to $150 billion, which for a company with a market cap of $213 billion, offers an interesting play for investors. However, we should note, as of fiscal 2019, the company's total liabilities were $59 billion, which is currently closer to $70 billion as of July 27th, 2020. Which, of course, the company has plenty of cash and short-term investments to cover their short and long-term debt. From a number standpoint, when investing into the semiconductor market, Intel represents an amazing value for investors. Remember, AMD has a market cap of $81 billion, considering Intel still produces 10 times more product when compared to AMD. Obviously, when you calculate future growth, that distorts the picture we just painted, but I won't get into that here, as we already covered it in our AMD Quick Stock Analysis, link in the description. And while I'm doing shameless plugs, I should quickly mention NVIDIA has made a huge push into the data center space with its GPUs, and has cemented itself as the largest US chip maker by market capitalization for the foreseeable future. Once again, link in the description. Anyways, getting back into the company, Intel expects to continue to see strong consumer notebook, cloud, and telco server demand. The thing is, Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, their products are in key technologies such as cloud, AI, 5G, intelligence, and autonomy. The thing is, there's going to be more than one large player in the market. And at the end of the day, a decade from now, if I had to make a bet on which company is going to be the market leader, I would have to put my money on NVIDIA and Huawei at least from a global leader standpoint, followed by AMD and Intel, which, don't get it twisted, this still represents a massive market for Intel. Remember, Intel's Xeon platform is foundational for data center AI with value, scalability, built-in AI acceleration, and inference leadership. Leading cloud service providers, including Alibaba, Baidu, Facebook, Microsoft, and Tencent, announced that they are adopting Intel's processors into their infrastructure and services. So with all of this in mind, what's our move? So far in our quick stock analysis videos, we have decided in the past AMD and Nvidia are both outstanding companies who offer huge catalysts for investors. And in both of those videos, I still recommended an investor consider the ETF Triple Q or QQQ, which is an ETF of the largest 100 tech companies, which obviously includes AMD, Nvidia, and Intel. And honestly, for long-term investors, I gotta keep that recommendation. Now that we covered our quick stock recommendation, let's take a look at people wanting to start or hold on to their Intel position. Well, most of the big banks downgraded the stock after its earnings call, which certainly gives the company some room to move down. 
However, at $50 a share, the company does seem undervalued from our quick stock perspective. But like we've talked about throughout the video, the company has plenty of hurdles that need to be cleared. But if the company can, it has plenty of room to run. Remember, the company's price per earnings is under 10, which is absolutely bonkers for a company so intergrained in our everyday way of life. Anyways, guys, that's all I've got for today. As always, the best investment you can make is to go long on Quake Stocks. Hit that subscribe button now at 890 subscribers and plan an early retirement. I will catch you guys in the next one.